Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Edward's Episcopal Church on this second Sunday in Easter. We are glad that you are here as we continue the celebration of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Our worship continues with Holy Eucharist Rite 1, found on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 323. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery has established the new covenant of reconciliation. Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know this man handed over to according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me. For he is at my right hand, and that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I say to you confidentially of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants 
on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke to the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and all of us are now witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 16 is found on page 599 in the Book of Common Prayer, or you may follow along on the screens above. Let us now read Psalm 16 responsively by half verse, followed by the refrain. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good of all of All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land. Upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer. Nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a good heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. For you will not abandon me to the grave. You shall show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson comes from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. <clears throat> Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you. 
And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. And as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Christ. Please be seated. We are in Easter time. Fifty days of celebration, remembering, and believing. Last week on the first Sunday in Easter, I mentioned the need to believe, for that is what the scriptures say. If we believe in Jesus, who is the Son of God, we will have eternal life. So, what do we believe? As Christians, what is the essential truth of Easter? Easter is the day that we celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ, the day Jesus Christ rose from the grave. Jesus defeated death. And though he took on our sin upon the cross, he took on, on himself the punishment for our sin, the wrath of God. His victory was made manifest in his resurrection. Easter is an event in the past. Jesus rose from the grave. Easter is an event in the future. We will also rise from the dead and be with Jesus forever. Easter is also an event for the present. We live out the truth of Easter and hope of Easter every day. The truth of Easter is that Jesus defeated death, so we do not live in the fear of death because of the resurrection of Jesus. The hope of Easter is that we will rise with Christ because our Lord's resurrection is the first fruit of God's great plan, God's great story of which he has brought us into through faith. And it is this fundamental truth of our Christian faith that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that sustains us, motivates us, heals us, strengthens us. Jesus is alive today. And this is why the words of our second reading from St. Peter are so true. As St. Peter writes, By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope. Not a wish, not a fleeting hope, but a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We hope because of Jesus' resurrection and because we will rise again. And he has brought us into an inheritance. That's our eternal life. And listen to what he says about it, about our inheritance, that it is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, 
who are being protected by the power of God through faith for our, a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. God has our eternal promise saved for us, and it is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Our eternal promise that we would rise with Christ Jesus, being protected by the power of God that will be revealed on the last day. Easter gives us the promise that we, as believers in Jesus Christ, are forgiven of our sins and the truth that Jesus is alive today. God is present with us right here, right now. And our Gospel reading points to this same truth, the story of Easter. It gives the account of how Jesus appeared before the disciples on the evening of that first Easter Sunday, on that very day of our Lord's resurrection. Listen to the way it starts. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. They were locked in the house with fear. They did not know what to do. They were expecting to get arrested, perhaps being charged with stealing the body or something like that. They feared for their lives. They thought they would be tortured, put to death, just as Jesus had been executed. They wondered if that would be their fate too. And many people today live in fear. Fear is rampant in society. People fear for the economy. They fear for their well-being, their loved ones. For many of us, we fear our perceived political enemy being in power. Boy, if that happens, the whole country is going to sing. We fear the threat of war, the threat of disease, a lawsuit. You can fill in the blank as it would seem an endless list of things that we can be gripped by fear with. From the richest nation in the world to the poorest, humans know what fear is. It grips us. It makes us hide and lock our doors. Whether physically locking a door or psychologically or emotionally locking a door in our heart because of fear, we don't want that to happen again. Just like the disciples were doing on that day that Jesus rose from the grave. Now we usually celebrate Easter Day with music flowers and festivities, grand meals. The disciples celebrate the first res resurrection day by hiding in a locked house. The women found that the tomb was empty that morning, but they still had the house locked that night in the evening. They were scared. And so what did Jesus say when he showed up? St. John wrote, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Jesus came and said, Peace. Our church father, St. Cyril of Alexandria from the 5th century, wrote this concerning our text. When Christ greeted his holy disciples with the words, Peace be with you, by peace he meant himself. For Christ's presence always brings tranquility of soul. It is in the person of Jesus that we find peace. It is in his presence we find peace. To know Christ is to know peace. We often think of this peace to be the absence of stress and anxiety, but it is much more than that. The Hebrew greeting of peace, shalom, means well-being. And in its fullest sense, it gathers up all the blessings of the kingdom of God. Shalom is life at its best under the gracious hand of God. Scholar Bruce Milne puts it, Jesus, shalom on Easter evening is the complement of his it is finished on the cross. For the peace of reconciliation and life from God is now imparted. Jesus gave more than a simple greeting. Peace, what's up? He shared the way of the kingdom of God as we walk out the truth. As we live out the truth of Easter, to live our Easter calling today is to live in peace and to share God's peace to a world that so desperately needs it. And then what did Jesus do and say after he proclaimed peace? St. John writes, after 
He said this. He showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father hath sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus showed them his scars. It was the same body that was beaten and killed. The same substance was redeemed. It was renewed. It was resurrected, just as we will be on the last day. And then Jesus told them he was sending them out to tell the Easter story, to share the good news of the gospel, to share his peace with the whole world. And then he gave them the Holy Spirit. God's presence would always be with them. And it's here we find great comfort with God's presence because we are not called to live in fear, but we are called to live in the peace of God. And instead of being absorbed with the world in all of its ways, we actually go to the world, into the world, and minister the love, the forgiveness, and the peace of God to our neighbor, to the world around us. This is living out the truth and hope of Easter. This is what it means to be an Easter people. Easter is not just an event, one Sunday a month. It is a movement. In many ways, it is a resistance movement. It resists the ways of the world and embraces the truth of Jesus. There's a story that we live out each day, choosing to believe in the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and allowing that truth to permeate and transform the way we talk, the way we live, the way we share our faith. The truth of Easter should saturate every bit of who we are. It changes the entire outlook of everything. Our belief in the resurrected Lord Jesus transforms everything. It stirs our hearts toward repentance. It stirs our hearts toward holiness. And it stirs our hearts to share the good news with others in this world. We are children of the resurrected King of the universe, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Finally, I would like to leave you with the words of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Mother Teresa probably needs no introduction, as I'm sure we're all familiar with her story. But let us be reminded that she chose to live in a place of suffering, serving the poorest of the poor, and living with sickness all around. She wrote these words. Never let anything so fill you with sorrow that you forget the joy of Christ risen. Never let anything so fill you with sorrow that you forget the joy of Christ risen. Joy. May we heed the words of Mother Teresa today and share the joy of Christ risen. Because we are Easter people people of God, children of God. May we share the truth of what we believe in this world. And may we love and serve our Lord Jesus in the truth and joy of Easter. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The service continues with the prayers of the people. We found on page 328 in the Book of Common Prayer, or you can follow along on the screens above. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto divine majesty, beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant unto all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael Presiding Bishop, Gregory our Diocesan Bishop, Justin our Bishop elect, Bishop Dorsey, Mark our Priest, Father John, Father Bradley, Deacon Mickey, and Deacon Kim. That they may both by their life and doctrine set forth the true and lively word and rightly administer thy holy sacrament. Today we lift up in prayer our parish members, Richard and Priscilla Pope. And also I lift up and bear the, the, the vestry who will be meeting this Tuesday. And our supported missionaries. And we welcome Parson Matthew Ashby into the family of Christ who will be baptized during our 10 a.m. service today. And that all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially his congregation here present and for our parishes of Christ the King in Orlando and the Church of Ascension in Orlando, that meet heart and do reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those that bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph our President and Ron our Governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Heavenly Father, let's remember those who give themselves to the service of others, the doctors, nurses, teachers, and all who administer to those in need and provide the necessities of life. Especially remember those who are associated with our parish family that served in the military and our first responders, TJ, Kyle, Scott, Ian, Elizabeth, Laura, Matt, Robert, Trevor, William, Colin, Steve, Nicholas, Zachary, Christian, Victor, Kent, Clay, Bradley, and Craig. I'd like to say the following prayer for social justice. Let us pray. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every heart of this land, of this nation, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, and that our division being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Open, Lord, the eyes of all people, behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoice in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance, and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those names on our parish prayer list, remembering Joanne, Barbara, Joe, Carol, Sherry, Merle, Lori, Elizabeth, Josh, Amanda, Mohammed, Abby, Ray, Terry, Franklin, Glenda, Carol, Carol, 
Judy, Susie, Jennifer, and any names I can remember at this time. And all those in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity. And we give thanks for the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating their birthday this week, remembering Ken and Loesch, Michael Shipes, Hunter Woolwood, Logan Woolwood, Sonia Elfie, Doug Betlatch, and Mary Lou Avis. And for those celebrating their wedding anniversaries, Michael and Claire Faircloth, and Jason and Karen Maxwell. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, the part of this life, my faith, and fear, especially remembering Bella Porter, Ruth Weatherall, Ed Polarski, Mary McLean, Mary Masters, Mary Simpson, Harry Morley, Ruth Sherratt, and Josephine Blecker. We seek to then then continue growth in our love and service, and a grant us grace to follow the good example of the Virgin Mary, St. Edward, and all thy saints, that with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please Thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of Thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Well, good morning again. It's good to see all of you on this second Sunday in Easter. Welcome those online as well. Thank you for being here today in digital format. It's good to have you with us. We have bells too. <laughs> um, the uh, few announcements for you. The uh, vestry meeting is this uh, Tuesday at 6.30 on April 18th. Uh, so if you are a vestry member, please do remember to pick up your, your packet that is in the narthex um, before you leave campus today. Uh, we'll continue our study on Thursday nights on, the, uh, on our ABC, the Adult Bible Conversation. That's also at 6.30 uh, each Thursday night. We're doing a new video series called The New Testament You Never Knew featuring N.T. Wright and Michael Bird. It's eight weeks long and it goes through. We had the first one last week. We had a great conversation after the video. And uh, so, um, but you're welcome anytime uh, to come on into the class. Uh, next Sunday is Preschool Sunday. Now that'll take place at 10 o'clock. It's our annual Preschool Sunday where the children of our preschool, those that are able to come, uh, come and share their songs with us. Um, and I get to accompany them with my ukulele, so it's always fun. Um, but uh, that'll be next Sunday at 10 o'clock. We'll also have a, um, a we'll receive a, a special offering benefit, benefiting the St. Edward's Preschool and VPK. By the way, uh, the preschool is up to 45 plus kids over there. I, it, according to our, yeah, that's great. <laughs> according to our records, I think that's the biggest it's ever been. And uh, so we're so excited about that. They're bursting at the seams. They keep on saying, we need more rooms. I'm like, I don't know where to get you rooms. So we're trying to figure that out. But, um, but the preschool is doing really well. So we're thankful for that. Um, one last thing, the, uh, on the 26th of April on Wednesdays at three o'clock, uh, Deacon Kim will be beginning a grief class uh, for those that are grieving the loss of their loved ones. If that's something that um, you are interested in, please do talk to Deacon Kim. It is limited to eight folks. There's not a sign up for it, just for um, reasons of privacy, but do talk to Deacon Kim if you're interested in the grief class and uh, she can give you more information on that. Are there any other announcements? Does choir resume this week? 27th of April. The They're resting after Easter. Okay, so not till the 27th, so. Um, yes? Uh-huh, yeah, go right ahead, Deacon Bob. Keep me deacons in prayer, because we have a first time I attended, and we have a, a um, diocesan deacon meeting this Saturday. Yes, thank you, Deacon Bum. We have two prayer shawls this morning, one for Susie and one for Ann. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up Susie and Ann to you and pray that you would encourage them and bring healing to their bodies, Lord God, in their time of need. May your peace sustain them. And Lord, may these prayer shows bring comfort and hope and healing in their lives. And I bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are there any birthdays today or this week? It's Doug's birthday. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Doug. Are there any wedding anniversaries today or this week? Are there any travelers? Anybody traveling? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
worship continues with Holy Eucharist Prayer 1, found on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 333. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, but chiefly are we bound to praise Thee for the glorious resurrection of Thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For He is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by His death hath destroyed death, and by His rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel as you are able. All glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that Thou of Thy tender mercy didst give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by His one oblation of Himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institutes, and in His Holy Gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, 
world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia! O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
If you would like to receive prayers of healing for yourself or for someone you know, please come forward at this time. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread and one cup. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
live in the risen Christ, to feel the joy of Easter each and every day of our lives. Shalom, peace. Let us share that peace as we go forth in the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah.